Here we have a square with the side of 1. Inside of the square we have an equilateral triangle with the side of 1 as well. And we also have a circle that is tangent to two sides of the square and one side of the triangle. The points of tangency are C, D, and E. And we ask to find the radius of this circle. Well, first of all, let's look at equilateral triangle. We know that angles in these triangles are 60 degrees, so this angle of 60 degrees. That means that the angle right here is going to be 30 degrees, because together they should give us the angle of the square. Next thing, let's connect the center of the circle, point O, with all the points of tangency, C, D, and E. And we know those segments are radii, and they are at 90 degrees to the tangent lines. Now notice that O, C, B, D is the square, so the sides of the square are radius of the circle and we're going to denote the radius a big letter R. Also, OE is also the radius, so we put R here. But if BD is R, AD should be 1 minus R, because whole AB is 1. But now let's look again at this circle we have and the angle EAD, this angle of 30 degrees. Our circle is inscribed into the same. Inscribed circles have a property that the distance from the points of tangency, point D and point E, to the vertex of the angle should be the same. So it means that AD should be equal to AE and will be equal to 1 minus R. Now, if you're not familiar with this property, it's very easy to prove. Just draw a line from A to O, and you have a left right triangle, A E O, and the right right triangle, A D O, and those triangles are actually congruent. Why are they congruent? Because they both have a leg equals to R, they have hypotenuse that they share, so it's the same for both of them, and then by Pythagorean theorem, the third side, the leg AE, should be equal to leg AD, and both are equal to 1 minus R. And these triangles are congruent by three sides. Since triangles are congruent, it means that respective angles and sides are congruent. So this angle 30 will be split into two angles of 15 degrees right here. And what you see on the left is the right triangle AEO, that's a triangle with 15 degrees. Two videos ago I was talking about right triangles with 15 degrees, and if you don't know about it, there's a link below. In that video I show that the ratio of the opposite leg to the adjacent leg should be equal to 2 minus square root of 3. Now, if you're interested in uh, trigonometry, that also is tangent of 15 degrees. Now, we can just use this property right here and find the radius from it. If you don't know anything about 15 degree angle and you don't care about 15 degree angles, well, we can avoid using this property. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our 30 degree angle and we're going to draw a horizontal line from point E. We get this EF. Now notice EF is parallel to AG. Now notice this angle of 60 degrees right here, angle EAG, and the angle right here, FEA, are what's called alternate interior angles. The alternate interior angles for parallel lines EF and AG and as such, they have to be congruent. That means that this angle right here should be 60 degrees. But it also means that angle right here, O, E, F, should be 30 degrees, because together they give us a right angle. Why do I need this 30 degree angle? What I'm trying to do here now is to calculate this length, D, F. 
There's not enough space right here to do this. Let's just zoom in and draw it here. So this is our point O, center of the circle. This is our point E, the distance is radius. Now here's our EF, this one, angle between them 30 degrees, and this blue line, DF, is actually this line AB. Okay. What we're gonna do, we're gonna drop a vertical line through point O. We get OH here. And here we see a right triangle, E. O H with an angle of 30 degrees, so it means that the angle right here is 60 degrees. We have 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. We know everything about those triangles. If you don't, there is a link to a video below. But what we need to know here is that this side, the leg opposite of 30 degree angle, and that's going to be O H, is half of the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is R, so O H is R over 2. But DF is the same as OH, so DF is also R over 2. Now if you come here, we see that BD is R, DF is R over 2 from here. Together they give us 3 R over 2. In this case, AF has to be 1 minus 3 R over 2. And now if you look at the triangle AEF, that's a right triangle and not just any right triangle, by 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And we have two sides known here, the hypotenuse, and the side that is adjacent to angle of 30 degrees. And we know that the side that adjacent to the angle of 30 degrees is the hypotenuse times square root of 3 over 2. So we can use that property here. Now, if you're interested in uh, trigonometry, that ratio is a cosine of 30 degrees or sine of 60 degrees. We can use the expression right here to find r, and r will be equal to 2 minus square root of 3 divided by 3 minus square root of 3. We could end the things here, because this could be final answer, but sometimes people don't like irrationality in denominators. We can get rid of it by multiplying and dividing this expression by a conjugate to the denominator. Denominator is 3 minus square root of 3. The conjugate is 3 plus square root of 3. If you do this, multiplying denominators, you get 6. Multiplying numerators, you get 3 minus square root of 3. And that is our final answer.